Hi everyone, and welcome to Dion Spice Wars. So, as you might or might not already know, Dion Spice Wars is the newest real-time strategy game that went into early access just recently, less than a week ago. And it's pretty solid for the initial early access release. It's developed by Shiro Games, which is a company that also made the Northgard before, and you will definitely see some influences from Northgard in here. And furthermore, while Dion Spice Wars is a real-time strategy game, the main focus is on 4X elements. So it's more of a 4X real-time strategy game. You can also pause it anytime you want. So uh, let's get started then, shall we? And we'll talk about how the game works. You can play as one of the four factions, House Atreides, House Harkonnen, Smugglers or the Fremen, and they all play quite differently. There are some pretty major differences between them. If you are only just getting started, I think House Atreides is the best one to start with. So let's start with House Atreides then. Now, there are a few things you can change before you get started. There are three different map sizes, medium, small and large. We'll just go with the medium. You can change sandworm activity, storm activity and the siege hostility. We'll talk about all that once we get started. There are three victory conditions. There's domination, which basically involves killing everyone else. We cannot disable that because killing everyone else is always an option. There's hegemony, which is basically a score victory. Hegemony is score, basically, that's what it is. And there's political victory, which involves basically winning a vote for June governorship and then keeping that for, I think, 60 days or something like that. You can also enable or disable assassinations of other faction leaders and you can disable certain AI players if you want to. You can also change AI difficulty. There are four different difficulties. We'll just start from the default, which is medium. And last but not least, before you get started, you have to pick two out of four counselors. And this basically gives you an additional bonus. Every faction has four different counselors available. And here are ours. We can unlock the veteran militia unit and all our military units would start with one more experience level. Uh, this is actually pretty damn strong, so we can grab that. We can get an additional trade for all our agents. Agents are a very important part of the game. There's a lot of espionage activity going on. So this is actually pretty good. And your villages will gain 20% resource production for two days when the region is targeted by one or more operations. So like I just said, there's a lot of espionage activity going on over the course of the game. So this is a pretty strong bonus right here. Uh, then we got the third one. All relation with all relation games with Siege are increased by 100%. Uh, so that's basically the neutral Fremen on the map, which you can make contact with gain relations with and once your relations are good enough you can gain a powerful bonus so this helps you do that more quickly and then you also get minus 10 percent authority cost to annex a village authority is basically a resource used for expansion so this allows you to expand faster and finally the last one allows you to impose any treaty upon other factions for the cost of 50 influence and they will need 100 authority to refuse and they will also start with an aggression pact already unlocked so that's also not too bad although it's tougher to use properly and way more situational which is why it's tagged as hard down here that doesn't mean like the game will be hard if you pick this it just means it's more challenging to use this properly to maximize the benefit. I think we can go with Duncan Idaho here. So that will make our expansion a little bit faster at the start of the game, which is pretty important. And also you can see some faction bonuses on the left. So these are things you get 
when you reach certain hegemony threshold, which, like I already said, is basically score, and it's one of the victory conditions you win when you reach 25,000. And again, each faction has different advantages here when they reach a certain threshold. And one of our big advantages is that we can use peaceful annexation, which you'll see once we get started. This is actually really nice, especially early on. The other factions will lose no authority from treaties with us, because normally when you sign a treaty, you have to pay authority upkeep, so to speak. Which makes other factions maybe less willing to accept just any treaty with you, because they have to consider whether it's worth spending that authority to accept it. If you're playing as a treaties, other factions do not lose authority from treaties with you, so it's not a consideration whether it's worth losing it or not, because they don't lose it. So as a result, in theory, they are more willing to accept it. Then you get more benefits from a high Landrad standing. Uh, Landrad is basically where you vote for various resolutions, which can give you bonuses, it can give you penalties, they can be global, they can be faction targeted. It's a pretty major part of the game. And finally, and this is a downside of playing as Atreides, you cannot pillage neutral villages. But if you weren't planning to pillage them to begin with, it's not much of a downside. Alright, so uh, let's get started, shall we? So here we are. Now, this game is possible. You can pause anytime you want, and you probably will be pausing quite a bit, because a lot of the time there's a lot going on. So uh, let's talk about what's going on here, because there's a fair bit of information when you start playing. So first of all, you start with your HQ, and this will be the only like major city or whatever you want to call it that you will have. This is your main hub in the game. Everything else you control will be villages. This is your only hub you will own. And uh, you cannot build anything in here until you reach 2000 hegemony. So we'll talk about this part a little bit later once we actually reach 2000. You also start with one ornithopter, which is basically a scout. You can use it to explore, you can use it to interact with certain things on the map. And here we already see Spice. Spice is, as you probably already guessed, uh, pretty much the most important resource that you will be looking for. And there's generally always one close to your starting location, and the, the one will be revealed. So we can go and explore in this direction already, and we'll probably want to settle over here. So now, there are a few things going on here. We can see our current spice income, which right now, unsurprisingly, is zero. And spice is used for two, well, three things, kind of. Here you have a slider. It goes from zero to 100. So what this does is it decides how much of your spice you will send to your stockpile right here, and how much you will exchange for solari, or gold, as I like to call it. It's always gold, all right? So here you can see the exchange rate from the CHOM contract. This basically tells you how much solari you will get from your spice. When it's high, you probably want to exchange it. When it's very low, you might want to stockpile your spice. And it can go from 0 to 100, so this slider decides how much will go uh, to both of these things. And uh, there's one more thing here, which is Imperial Tax. Once in a while you have to pay an Imperial Tax, in here is going to be 80 for our first one. If you don't do it, you will take a penalty. And it can actually be a valid strategy right at the start, uh, to just put the spice stockpile at zero, and not pay the first tax, because the penalty right at the start is not that bad. You can afford to take this penalty, especially early on. But that's more of an advanced start strategy, let's just say. Generally speaking, this is something you have to pay regularly. If you don't, you will take progressively worse penalties. So that's the tax. Then, uh, here's the spice report, that's basically what I already just said. 
then we have Solari, which we already talked about, but that's pretty much gold. This is the official currency. That's what you'll be using for a lot of things. Then we have Plascrit, which is the building material mostly used to build things. Then we have manpower, which is fairly self-explanatory. We'll be using that to recruit our military, but to also recruit militia to defend the villages. And it's also used as upkeep for certain other things, uh, like certain types of defensive buildings. Then we have fuel cells, which are used for select things like harvesters or ornithopters. Right now we can see we are paying two in upkeep for our one ornithopter. Then we have water, which should be fairly self-explanatory, but water is basically used to supply controlled villages, but it's also used for units. So if I want to hire some units, we can see that I don't need some water to actually be able to hire them. Right now we have 20 and we do get base 20 uh, from our actual base. Then we have authority, which is basically a resource used for expansion. That's primarily what it's used for. It's used to take control of villages. And the villages is how you get more territory. And finally, we got Landrad standing. Uh, the Landrad is not open yet, right at the start of the game. So we can talk about that once it actually opens. But it's basically the council where you vote on various proposals. They can give you some pretty strong bonuses, some pretty harsh penalties. And it's actually a very major part of the game. And it's going to be one of our strengths as the Atreides. So uh, let's unpause and we get started. We don't want to get some units right at the start. So we can grab a trooper and a ranger. And uh, each faction has slightly different strengths okay. on their units. And uh, let's go explore then, shall we? You can also speed things up. There are a few different speed settings. Uh, three different speed settings. You can go up to double the regular speed. Like so. Uh, yep, there we go. That's double. Uh, all right, I will be pausing a lot because there are quite a few things to explain. Uh, so here's the region to the west. And the map is divided into these territories. You can either control the entire territory like this or not control it. It's binary. You can't control like a portion of this. You either control it or you don't. And they control it by taking over the village in it. Right now we cannot see where the village is. It's going to be here. But first we have to actually tell our ornithopter to investigate this. And what is done doing that, it will reveal the village. And once it reveals the village, we can consider taking control of it, to take control of this territory. And that will allow us to get the spies. On duty. So uh, there are two ways to take control of a village for us. We can straight up attack it with our units over here. Right now we can see that they have two armed civilians here as their militia. Or we can use our peaceful annexation ability which will cost us influence right here, and it will take 15 days. Now, the peaceful annexation will take significantly longer uh, than just attacking it, but the benefit of that is that you can use your units, your military, uh, to do something else elsewhere. Because moving across the map is not fast. There is a way to move quickly using shuttles, so you can build additional airfields and your base also acts as an airfield. And if you pay gold, it's 20 gold per unit, you can move around. It's still not instant, but it's much faster. Actually walking across the map takes a pretty long time. So being able to annex a village, let's say on one end of the map, and sending your army to the other end to do something else can be quite beneficial. Right at the start, we want to take over this village quickly. So we'll attack it with our units. Uh, sometimes you can kind of bait them closer to your base and it will attack as well. And this might be, yeah, this is actually close enough. So these attacks are pretty damn strong. It has 60 power. To compare, a ranger has 17 power and the trooper has 20. 
So, and it's also an AoE attack. But it's a little bit far away, so it might be a little bit tricky. They will start backing up if I go too far, but we can do it. So that way it will happen a little bit faster than it otherwise would. And once we kill them, we can go take over the village. Uh, now, you can also set your Ornithopter to Auto Recon. Uh, I'm specifically not doing that just yet. So the other thing it will find are these points of interest, like a crashed shuttle right here. And you usually get two different options here. And we do have two options. One of them is to investigate the crash. We have to use an agent for that. We cannot do that just yet because we do not have any agents, but we will get agents. So once we get an agent, we can investigate this and we will get an advance in random accessible development by two days, military development. Uh, this is basically research. Again, I can't open this yet, so I can't show you, but this is one thing we can get out of it. We can also use our Nornithopter to investigate it further and then we'll get Solari as a reward. At the start of the game, we want extra resources as much as possible. So we'll take Solari. And here's another thing, a sandworm. So sandworms are a thing, as you might have guessed. And in this case, we can see a warning that there's a sandworm nearby. If we don't get out, it will eat us, <laughs> which is not a good thing. Do not feed the sandworms. Definitely don't do that. Let the other bastard feed them. In this case, they are already dead, so they cannot okay, feed it. Uh, right, yeah, let's finish investigating this. We'll get the Solari. Wait for the sandworm to go away. And then we can go annex the village. So annexing the village will cost us authority, regardless of which method you use. If it's peaceful annexation, it will cost authority, if you take control the regular way, it will also take authority, and it will be the same amount. In this case, it's 32, and also 5 water. But this will be quite a bit faster than annexing it peacefully, and then we'll be able to start gathering spies right away. Uh, is this guy broken or what? He should be investigating this. Yeah, there we go, that works. So that will give us some Solari, a third amount of it. We got almost 1000 now. Uh, this will also be a village because of these rocks. That kind of gives it away. So we got our new village and now we can go to developments. So this is basically research. It's divided into four different sub-trees. So espionage intelligence right here in the top left. Uh, this is mostly used for like expansion and things like that. So we can get minus 15% authority cost to annex a village, minus 20% military units, water upkeep, some solari discounts, or other solari production increases by 20% of available water, and things like that. And some developments are unique to your faction, or have some components unique to your faction. And that's indicated by this green icon right here. So it's not necessarily that everything here is just unique to your faction, but it can be just one of the components in here that's unique to your faction. Uh, so, yeah. Then we have like economic subtree down here. So this can help your spice production because you will be able to assign an extra crew to your harvesters. You can unlock the processing plant, which generates Solari in a region uh, with a specific resource and mostly various economic benefits here. And then we have the military subtree down here. So that's various military benefits. And what do we actually want to start from? So we can reduce the authority cost to annex a village. That's definitely a good idea because we'll be annexing a lot of villages early on. We can also reduce village buildings construction costs. We'll get both because we'll be doing both early on. So let's get local dialect studies. 
that will take five days, which is not a whole lot. Uh, then we have the village. Uh, oh, and another benefit of peacefully annexing a village is that you will get to keep all the militia inside it. If you just attack it with your troops, uh, there will not be any militia. And it's not exactly expensive to hire them, uh, but it still costs you manpower and gold. So, something to consider. And here's veteran militia, uh, because of one of our advisors, right here. So this unlocks the veteran militia unit, which is more expensive, a lot more expensive, but it's also a lot stronger. And then we have buildings. So each village can have up to five buildings eventually, but you only start with two slots unlocked, and you have to pay plus grid to unlock more slots. First is 100, then 300, and then 500. And right at the start, we obviously want the refinery uh, to start getting the spies. So that's what we'll get. And uh, another important thing, and this is a very important concept in the game, which is supply. If you are outside of your territory, your units will start losing supply, which is right here. If it drops to zero, you will start losing your health until you die, or until you go back into your territory. And how much supply you lose is decided by the wind strength. So the wind strength basically indicates how much supply will be drained from your units if this region is outside of your supply. But however, higher wind strength also means you can get more water from this territory if you build the relevant building, which we will be doing soon. So this one, for example, only has two wind strength, which means our supply drain will be quite a bit lower, but we also want to get as much water out of that. All right, so there's the next village. We can just keep going manually here for now. We'll check this out, see what that is. It could be something that increases production of a certain resource, for example. Yes, sir. So we definitely want to find something like that early on. Okay, no, that's another point of interest. So we can get additional plus crit out of this. And we will, because we'll be using a lot of that early on. So it's worth grabbing at the start. Now, I will not be recruiting too many units, because I'm going to need water to get more villages, and getting more units costs water. You will not have a very large army until much, much later into the game. And even in like the late game, you will not have an army that's that big. Alright, we got it. Now we can get the plus crit, that was quite a lot, as you can see. And move on. Initially, I will check out the regions that are immediately adjacent to our base. So I can probably attack this while also getting the benefit of the base bombardment. Although I might or might not be able to walk down this cliff. We should be able to walk down here. Oh, maybe not. Still, this might actually be close enough for our base to attack. And there are two points of interest here, so hopefully one of them will be like a bonus resource. Okay, not this one. Maybe this one. We're moving. Yes, sir. Received. And these guys only have two militia, so even without base bombardment, we can handle this. But you can already see, my supply is draining pretty quickly. So I want to hurry up before I run out of supply. Oh yeah, these are ranged, so we actually need to move in and attack. Uh, they won't follow us unless I move very far away. Yes. Yeah, see, my supply is almost at zero already. Supply is pretty brutal in this game. Agreed. And now we have a sandworm again. I was going to move away out of the range, uh, but then we got the sandworm. So let's see. I probably should have waited. I don't think attacking them here was a very good idea. Here we can get some spies out of this. Uh, okay, yeah. Alright, not a big deal. We'll grab two more guys. 
However, I could also just annex this peacefully, but it will take 15 days. But we will also get to keep the militia. I think in this case I'm going to do that, because there are energy sources in this region. And that's not really as important. This gives you extra fuel cell production. I will need fuel cells, but I'm not going to need extra fuel cells in the nearest future. So I can afford to wait for this. We will use peaceful annexation. Here we got the spies. We finished local dialect studies. Then we can get composite materials. Uh, but yeah, I think this engagement uh, was a really good example how important supply is in this game. It's really, really important. Furthermore, some regions are deep desert, with much higher wind speeds, which you cannot cross safely, you just cannot do it. You can in some circumstances, as some factions, mostly the Fremen, but it's still dangerous. Uh, here's our first agent. So espionage is a pretty big part of the game, and you can assign your agents to a few different things. Counterintelligence, other factions, right now there's not much point assigning them to other factions, because we are just getting started. And you can also assign them to Arrakis, Spacing Guild, Chom, or Landsrad. Assigning them to Arrakis will give you some extra authority production, and it will also allow you uh, to pick the other option from the points of interest. Uh, you saw it earlier, one of the options was to send an agent, and then you get like two days to a random military development or other type of development depending on what point of interest it is. So that's why you need at least one agent assigned here. Without that, you cannot use that option. Then we have the Spacing Guild, which gives you some manpower. We don't need that right now. Every option here will give you some intel production. And intel can be used for what's basically spells in here. We won't be getting 50 or 100 in the near future, but these are basically spells that are used on the map. So you can get the vision and information about the region. You can reduce enemy power in the region. And there are some pretty powerful ones later on. Like for example, yeah, there's a supply drop, but you can literally stop an enemy attack, ceasefire, it interrupts and prevents battles for two days. Two days is not that much, but it can be enough to allow you to prepare proper defenses. Then there's Chom, which will give you more Solari production, and the Landsrad, which will give you more influence. So uh, first we'll go to Arrakis here, because authority is one of the most important resources right at the start we'll need that to expand. Without that, we cannot really expand. Uh, all right, let's get two troopers here. We are ready. So these guys gain 10% power for each bonus received from an ally unit. Uh, okay, so that's the region up here. Uh, let's go west, right here. That will be the last one directly adjacent to our base territory. And we can take over uh, this village up here. On duty. This will be in range of On our duty. base, As so we can get some extra help from the base bombardment. The Just so that we lose less health. Right here. Okay, let's see what this is going to be. Yeah, this is going to be pretty easy when we have the base helping us. Uh, okay, uh, now we are being raided from the south. So you will get raided once in a while like this. And it is helpful to have some militia to slow them down. But we are pretty close, so this is not really a big deal. Uh, I can actually show you uh, how faster movement works in this situation. So the HQ will act as kind of an airfield in this situation. I just need to leave combat. And we can use this ability and pay 40 gold uh, to move anywhere within range of either our HQ or any other airfield we have. We do not have any airfields right now, 
but I can still pay 40 gold to go from here to here, which, you know, isn't super far, but these guys do not move very quickly, so it's still going to speed things up. And as you saw, we are actually going to need a little bit of extra water to take over that territory. So that's going to be the next building we want to build down here. Uh, speaking of buildings, here's a very useful resource, minerals. So that will give a plus grid factory in this region, plus 50% resource production. We definitely want that. A 50% bonus is quite a lot. So let's kill these guys real quick. And then we'll get some water from this region. Then we probably want to take over this one first. Because we want to take advantage of the minerals. And now we can actually turn on auto recon. Uh, not yet, hold on. Uh, we'll grab this for the plus grid. Okay, that's done. Uh, also, the harvesters have an option to auto recall them if you get a sandworm near the harvester. You can do it manually, but there's often like a lot going on in the game. So frankly, I just keep it on auto recall. It's only 5% penalty. It's not really a big deal. And getting the harvester again, you have to wait to get another harvester if the sandworm eats it. It's a little bit annoying. You lose way more money and spice when you wait for a harvester than you lose from the 5%. And if you keep auto recall on off, you will probably miss that sandworm sooner or later. And you lose a lot more than that 5%. So I just keep it on auto recall. It's way more convenient. I can focus on other things that way. All right, we finished composite materials. Now we could get intelligence network. We could get water cellar contacts. Minus 20% military water upkeep and minus 20% water upkeep on villages. Let's do that. Yes, sir. So now we want to go here. Go. And that should be fine with two troopers. I'm pretty sure it will be fine. Yes, sir. I can probably still lure them close enough to my base, but this is a little bit too far. So we'll just attack them the regular way. And attack the ranged guy first because he's way more squishy. So we should win this, no problem. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, right, so now we want the building which will give us water, which is right here, wind trap. That gives you plus three water for each level of wind. So this region had four wind, which is like average-ish. Some have higher, some have like two level wind. Okay, now we can turn on auto recon. And I might even get another Ornithopter to explore a little bit faster. Let's do that. It's probably worth it. One will be a little bit too slow, I think. And yeah, we'll win here easily, as you can see. So this shows the really big difference in supply, because right here earlier, I ran out of supply and started losing health because I was out of supply. Here I had no problem with the supplies. Uh, all right, we need to wait for the wind trap to finish and then we can annex this. And then we want to build a plus grid factory ASAP. Okay, here's an interesting region. This is a special region with a special bonus. We get plus 100% wind trap resource production and the military units have minus 100% daily supply drain. And we will get 500 hegemony by claiming this region. So we will definitely want this in some near future. Here's the Imperial tax, we paid that. Now the Chom exchange rate has changed, now it's lower. And uh, we are on track. We can actually just change this. We should still be on track. So if I lower it to, let's say, 30 towards our spy stockpile, we will still be okay. Now, this is just an estimation, which assumes your spice operations will not be interrupted. So that's something to keep in mind. Because if you get recalled due to a sandworm, you will not be gathering any spice for some period of time. So if that happens, you need to keep an eye on this. 
but our next Imperial tax is 109, and this will keep going up. Okay, uh, we are just waiting to finish the wind shop here. And we can probably get one more unit, because uh, some villages will now have three militia units. This one will probably have three. Uh, right now it's just two. But one of them will have three sooner or later. Let's get a ranger. And we got another unassigned agent. So, since authority is really important early on, I will still assign him to Arrakis here. It will give us more authority, it will allow us to expand faster. Authority is just that important. We got the trade request, right, from Vladimir Harkonnen. I will not be accepting this, but I can show you how we can trade. So there are a few things going on here. You can sign a treaty, which will give you a straight up plus 15% knowledge or solari production, but you will lose one authority. He would normally also lose one authority, but since we are Atreides, he will not. And this treaty will last for two months. And it should also increase your relation level. We can also trade various resources directly, and here we can see how much he values different resources. There's no arrow pointing down right now, but if you get a red arrow, that means he does not value that resource, and you should generally be able to buy it cheaper. And this works by just like placing things here, and you will get an indicator like how favorable that deal is for him or not. So if I wanted to, let's say, sell some of my plus kit for Solari, I would get 20 for 60. He would not give me 30, most likely. So that's pretty much how trade works. We will not be doing that right now. And here's the Landrad. Uh, okay, so the Landrad is a very, very important part of the game. And uh, once in a while you will get random proposals here. Later on you can reroll them, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. And uh, you have two resources you can use to vote. You have your actual votes, which are not expanded, in the sense that you will have these votes every single time this happens. You can use them, and if you don't use them, then like you just wasted them. This is their purpose. This is their only purpose, to use them for voting. And you can also use your influence, which is a separate resource that you do, in fact, expand. In our case, we can use influence to peacefully annex villages to get extra votes. Right now we cannot vote yet, we will be able to vote in six days. And here we can see the current proposals. The selected faction will suffer minus or rather plus 30% plus grid upkeep, that's pretty rough. Everyone will suffer minus 30% unit power penalty. So just units, not like defensive buildings, for example. And everyone will get minus 30% influence production. Uh, that is pretty rough. I think this is the first time when I had three negative proposals in the first land run. But okay, okay. We will be able to place our votes in six days, so we will wait for that. Uh, all right, the construction complete, so now we can take control, and then we'll build a plus grid factory here to take advantage of the minerals bonus. Now, if I want more buildings in this region, I can add the building slot permanently by paying 100. Uh, there's no need to do that right now. We will do that eventually. And you can see the speed difference between taking control the regular way and annexing peacefully. This is still going on. It has two days left. But I don't have to worry about it. I can just go do something else while the peaceful annexation process is going through. We already took control of this one, and yeah, this is still but two days left. So you can see the speed difference. Okay, so now we want uh, the plus grid factory right here. With that said, once we are done with peaceful annexation, we will get to keep the militia in here, uh, like I already mentioned earlier. Alright, we got our new ornithopter. 
Uh, let's actually just use auto recon for now. So next we probably want this. This is not a region useful for anything in particular, but it's right next to our HQ. It has decent wind strength, more building slots. We'll take it. It won't take long. All right, uh, so uh, here's a resource that can give you more gold. So rare elements. This allows the construction of a processing plant. Processing plant basically gives you a straight up plus 30 solari. So it's a pretty good one. You can't just build it anywhere. You have to build it in a region with rare elements. We haven't unlocked it yet, but now it actually makes sense to unlock it when we know we'll be able to build it. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Our next priority is to find more spies. We only have one single region with spies, which is definitely not nearly enough. Here, we took control of the village, we got the militia. Uh, let's actually hire one more here. That will give us two ranged and one melee. And for the buildings, so I do not need a fuel cell factory yet. I will need it later, but I do not need it yet. There's not much point getting a wind trap in here, because wind strength is really low. We could just get a research hub to speed up our research. We could get listening post to get more influence, because you can use influence for extra votes, but in our case we will also use influence for peaceful annexation. So that makes sense. Uh, here's something I mentioned earlier, the missile battery will use manpower for upkeep. So right now we are not exactly generating a lot of manpower, which means if I build a missile battery somewhere, my manpower would be in the negatives, which is not what we want. Let's actually get a research hub here for faster research. There's another important building, uh, which I hovered over very briefly, the maintenance one. So the maintenance one reduces maintenance of all the buildings in that region and also adjacent regions. It's very, very important to build that strategically, and we will. Okay, we are taking control of that, obviously. And we'll probably build a maintenance center here. Uh, perhaps. Or, actually, it would be better to build it here, because then it will have three adjacent regions, instead of two, because our base doesn't really count. So this is a little bit better. And I will be expanding in this direction, one way or the other. So we can actually spend 100 to add the building slot. And then we can build the maintenance center. So the maintenance center only costs 85 plus creed. It does not cost any upkeep on its own. And it reduces your upkeep. It's very important to build this. And just generally speaking, the resource management in this game is a pretty big deal. There's often a fairly delicate balance in your resources. You have to keep an eye on that. What's this? Okay, so this is something we can do, but we don't have to. If we take control of two new villages, we'll be able to gain 200 hegemony. If we get 1000 solari, we could just buy 200 hegemony. Uh, we will be getting control of another village soon. We are literally already doing that. So, not a big deal. We should be on track to get enough spice here. That's not a problem. Okay, so let's finish annexing this. Now we can get the hegemony. We are getting close to 2000 right here. So at 2000, we'll unlock the buildings in our base, which are really powerful. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Now we need water first, so we'll grab the wind trap. This region has four wind strength. And then we probably want to go south uh, to get this Mondo Valley region, because that is really nice. Research is done. So if we are going to expand south, we want to get structured warehouses, which will unlock the processing plant building. Service, Definitely. Let's go this way then. 
So let's wait and see what this is first. Yes, sir. Then we can decide whether to go through here or through here. Now, you don't need to uh, take control of villages that are directly adjacent to your territory. I could just get this one right away. In fact, I could just use peaceful annexation on it and not even go there to begin with. But I think the next region I will try to annex peacefully will be one with spies. We just need to find some spies to begin with. Okay, so here's the vote. Now we can actually place our votes and we have six days to do so. And like I said, we got 100 votes that we can spend. Uh, there are also minor houses that will spend their votes and they might help us. And I can target some faction with the first proposal, but the other two are global. Now, I don't really want this to pass all that much, but I don't care about this as much as I care about influence. I do not really want a 30% influence production penalty. So let's use 50 volts for this. And we can target, let's say, House Harkonnen with extra plus grid upkeep. So if I go any further, this number will turn blue, which indicates that I am now spending influence to do this. It definitely makes sense later on. Uh, right now, I don't think I want to spend a lot of it because I'm not gaining a lot of it to begin with. So 50 volts here and 50 volts here should be fine. I can still adjust my votes anytime I want until voting ends in six days, so I can do that. There's the plus grid factory. So now we're going this way. What is this? Okay, more minerals. Uh, I could still grab that. So it's an option. But I think I'll just expand through the middle. Because I don't know what's over here, for example. Or over here. It doesn't matter as much. I will want all of this eventually. I don't think it matters as much. How many militia? Uh, two in here. Uh, this one will be a little bit cheaper, actually. Uh, the authority cost down here will be a bit higher. So let's go this way. We got 69 authority, which is not that much. So let's grab this. And again, I could technically just go directly for the Mondo Valley region. I can, and maybe I will. In fact, that makes more sense to grab that first. Let's grab that first, because I do not have enough authority to grab both of them in rapid succession. I'm already attacking, so I will let that finish. Yep, we got the Sandworm. I can't say I'm surprised. Here, we'll stand on the rock. It won't eat us. Still waiting for the vote to end. We got the wind trap. Alright then. So now I probably want to go back and heal myself a little. Get our supplies back to full. So we'll just chill around here for a moment. And then go uh, for the Mundo Valley. Uh, here are the smugglers, right here, their ornithopter. A new spice field, okay. So we want to claim this ASAP. In fact, I could initiate a peaceful annexation right now. Or I could go there with my actual units and attack it. I will lose a fair bit of supply if I go there, but this region here only has two wind strength. So we should be fine in terms of supply. I don't think we need full health on this fella. They do have three militia units as their defenses. But we don't want to claim this as quickly as possible. It's 68 authority. Plus 33 because of distance to main base. We're focused. We are on the move. Okay, let's go and take control directly. We're moving. If I spend 50 for this one, I'll have 37 left. Okay, that shouldn't take too long to get extra. Alright, let's take control of this one. 
we should get enough fairly quickly. We are getting plus six. It's not a big deal. I don't want to take an unnecessary risk. Uh, voting will end in one day. And then we can see the outcome. So show me the outcome. Go on then. So this won't take long. All right, what's the outcome? Uh, yeah, that's the Fremen. Yeah, I can already see we got the plus crit penalty. Oh, well, I guess that's not the end of the world. The influence production penalty did not go through. That's good. It was declined. Almost nobody supported it. Just some minor houses. And the minus 30% unit power wars also declined. Uh, okay. Sure. I think I voted to support it by accident. Either way, it was decline. All right, we got that. Now we'll go directly for the new spice. And here's the uh, deep desert region. So there are no settlements here. Wind strength is at 10. And you generally don't want to go in here. Because you will die. Pretty much. You can walk across it a little bit, but really not much. Generally speaking, you don't want to go here. Unless you really know what you're doing. Yes, Alright, let's, let's go. go. So these have three militia units, but two of them are ranged. So they should go down fairly quickly. We'll just attack the ranged ones first. They are way more squishy. And that shouldn't be a problem. And then after that, we'll take control uh, of the Mundo Valley. Getting the spies is a bit more important right now. So that's what we're doing. And by the way, we are in the, like the top left corner of the map. There's no more territory here. That's it, that's the end of it. There's one like here, but this is the end of the map. Okay, uh, yep, I saw that. Sandworm again. It's okay, we'll stand on the rock. We lost one unit, but that's all right. They are expendable. Development research is done. So now we can actually build the processing plant. Let's get intelligence network. I think. Or we can get survival training, actually. Increases army's max supply by 50%. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds reasonable to me. I need to cancel this. Okay, that works. Are you dead yet? Uh, here's a raid happening. Okay, okay. Uh, interesting. I might need another unit then. Okay, let's get another trooper. I don't think I have enough time to hire militia in here. We can try to get one really quickly. But I don't think that's enough time. I'll have to go back and actually attack them. Uh, so I don't want to take control of this, but we don't have 75 authority yet. We got 2000 hegemony. Uh, okay, so this unlocks some buildings in our HQ. And uh, you start from like uh, one out of four in each category. You have economic, military and statecraft buildings. And there are bonuses you can get. So this is a little bit confusing the first time you see it, but the way it works is that it's divided into districts. And you have districts with one building slot, like this one, two building slots, like this one, and three building slots, like this one. And in order to get these bonuses over here, you have to fill that district with that type of buildings. So for example, if I want the second economic bonus here with plus 10% solari production, I have to build two economic buildings in this district or this district, the two building one. And once I do that, I will get plus 10% solari production. If I want to get plus two armor for all military units, I need three military buildings in here, in the free building district. If I want the first one, I just need to build one 
here, here, or here. So that's how it works. And the buildings themselves have pretty powerful bonuses, but they are not cheap to build. Each one of these buildings is a pretty big deal. So the research center, for example, would give us plus three knowledge, plus 30% knowledge, and minus 30% research hub upkeep. This makes your research quite a bit faster. Then we have the recruitment center, which gives you plus 0.5 manpower per controlled village. Military units are trained 20% faster, and plus two training slots. Then we have the embassy, which gives us more influence production. Agents assigned on land rad infiltration produce more solari. And the plus 20% influence production per other faction with relationship above 50. And then you unlock more uh, through developments, basically. You can even see which development you need to unlock the next building. And you can see, a lot of them are really powerful. Like I said, the barracks give you plus 20% health for all your military units. Plus 50% experience gain for all your military units. And plus 50% units region is pretty powerful. So it's a pretty big decision what to build first and why, and in what order. 1500 gold and 500 plus crit is no joke. And then you pay 20 solari and 20 plus crit in upkeep. So you really need to think about this. Uh, anyway, let's get our one guy here and then we can attack the raiders. Uh, we can let them stand over there for a little bit. Ready. Agreed. We're moving. Because I want to wait for our third guy. He should arrive in time. Taking position. Let's go. I will engage them uh, preemptively, but yeah. not yet. On duty. It takes them quite a bit of time to liberate it. So, you have time. And technically, I could use Solari uh, on this guy to move him over. Yes, it's only 20, so it's not a big deal. I'm not exactly super rich at the moment, but we can do it. Here, 20. Let's go. Building some airfields yes, is definitely a good idea later As you to allow for Let's faster go. movement. Okay, now we can we attack. <laughs> this guy really insists on just moving in. Here, we'll win this, no problem. Okay, so we need 75, which we already have. Uh, once we're done dealing with them, oh, Sandworm, we'll go back to annex this. I'm not using peaceful annexation because that takes too long, and I want to get my new harvester going as soon as possible. We are ready. We are okay, let's go back. We're uh, not yet. Also, quick note, while there is an option on their harvesters to auto-recall, uh, there's no option to auto-deploy. You have to deploy them manually once they get recalled. Just something to keep in mind. A new Landrad Council. The elected faction gains plus 30% authority. Now, that's something I might go in with influence. Minus uh, plus 30% water upkeep. That's quite a bit. And the military development's completion speed is increased by 50%. Yeah, we probably want to go all in on Imperial propaganda there. That's a pretty big one. At your service, sir. Almost done. Okay, let's go back and annex this. We have enough already. And then we can use peaceful annexation on something. Uh, we'll see. And maybe I can get a quick one-time boost somewhere. We can get some spice over here. Let's see what this is going to be. Agreed. Uh, here's another rare element. Okay. On duty. Okay, we have to beat them again. They are already back. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, let's attack the ranged guys. Like I said, they are way squishier. I think I'll still win this. Uh, I didn't think they will already come back. But alas, they did. Sandworm again. Maybe it will eat our friends here, but probably not. They are standing on the rock. Okay, we lost one guy, that's fine. I think we'll win this. Would be a bit awkward if we didn't. Development research is done. So we could get modular parts to get an extra crew in our harvesters. It's an option. Uh, let's get the intelligence network because I haven't worked on that at all. 
Uh, don't die on me, guys. I can't even afford another trooper right now. Uh, how about we trade something? Super. Who doesn't value gold right now? The Fremen. How is Arrakis treating? So... We are already on track to pay the Imperial tax. Let's sell some spices. Maybe like 10 influence. Here. Uh, that's not a bad deal. I will accept that. There, they accepted. Now we can get another trooper. That's 200. Come on, people. How hard is it to beat that guy? Done. Okay, one more. I think we'll save both our remaining Yonis here. So, what is this? Uh, reward hegemony. Okay. Uh, send military Yonis to investigate to do that. We could get another Ornithopter if we send military units. I think we can send some agents here. We'll get intel out of this one. And uh, expansion development progress from this one. Okay, let's do that. What else? Spice over here? I could go for that. Uh, let them finish what they're doing. I could easily get a third one, but I can't afford it at the moment. Let's get this done real quick. Okay, done. Take control, obviously. Uh, an assigned agent. So we can assign that guy to the Landrad, maybe. Get some influence. Here you go. We already know this part. We paid our Imperial tax. Uh, okay, we will not have enough for the next one, so let's go 50-50 for now. That should be fine, that is fine. We will get more spice soon. And in order to get a harvester here, I will need more fuel cells. Which in this case we can get from our region over here. So, fuel cell factory. And that will give us plus 50% because of energy sources. Okay, I don't need to work on my gold a little bit, which is why we need this region next. So we need 67. I will just attack this one myself because I don't want to wait. Although, yeah, no, I think we'll attack it ourselves. I'll just need more than two almost dead units. We are ready. Yes, sir. Here, new trooper. Let's I'll have to wait for them uh, to have full health. Anyway, we have the village. We need how much? Uh, we just need uh, the fuel cells. We'll have that pretty soon. Then we can build the refinery right away. And then we want to find the third spice field. Here's the third one. Okay, uh, we want this for sure. So I think this will be the peaceful annexation. Because that's actually a little bit far away, so that makes sense. Uh, however, uh, I think that's also going to be enough for this episode. I think we covered a lot of the basics of how the game works. So I really like this game so far because it's more of a 4x focused real-time strategy, but it's also pretty easy to learn, uh, but fairly hard to master. It's really not hard to learn how to play it, but playing it well is the challenging part. Uh, either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like if you did to denounce the YouTube algorithm as is tradition. And it's especially useful on like first part like this. And uh, let me know if you would like to see more and how much more. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.